Hi again and thank you for popping back into my creative channel and this week I'm going to show you in the best way possible how to create abstract art using alcohol inks on an epoxy resin base. It's a two-step process and I'll give you all my tricks to achieving a beautiful wispy effect. The first thing you're going to want to do is to find an appropriate mask. This has a filter on it and that's the one that I use and I find that this is the best type to use. So I will get a lot of questions asking me about this little blow dryer. So this is a hair blow dryer and it came with a small circular brush. I've just discarded the brush and I'm just using mostly the low setting. It does come with a cold setting and a an higher setting, but I, I very rarely use those two. And of course, you'll need some gloves. I usually use about two to three pairs per project and some 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol, or you could use 90%. So I have bought this Lazy Susan from Ikea. It's just a plain old Lazy Susan. And I am going to use a primer on it. This is a spray primer by Rastolian. I'm going to do at least two coats. And in this little bottle that says 99% isopropyl alcohol, I am going to add 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. So this will be used throughout this video. It has a little red lid on it. So if anyone wants to know in advance, I've just poured some alcohol into this bottle. It makes it a little easier to pour onto my work. I also am using this artwork that I've done last year as sort of an inspiration. So I'm just going to keep it to the side and just keep referring back to it. It will help me. So in these three little cups, what I'm going to do is add a drop each of a blue, a green and a pink, I think it is. And I'm just going to add a little bit of plain isopropyl alcohol into each cup and swirl it around. And I have already sprayed this. This is white, although the color on my um, screen is a little orangey. I might have to fix that. And I'm just going to slowly pour each of the colors on and I'm going to start off this way. Now, what will happen is and what happens with me is the first design that you do is never really as you'd like it to be. But I find if you start off with a diluted version of alcohol ink, and build it up into a more intense, deeper color tones, you get better results. So you'll see me doing um, a couple of processes here, mostly adding the alcohol ink down and then using the blow dryer to blow it around. I have got some brass um, pinata alcohol ink there as well. Um, make sure you, sh you shake the bottle. If you don't do that, you'll just get sort of a diluted version. You want kind of a nice intense gold. Don't use too much of the brass. Um, I found that if you use too much, it takes over the entire design. So now I'm starting to add just drops of undiluted alcohol ink and I'm just pouring some alcohol on the top of it and whisking it around. Now it is really difficult to explain how to do um, alcohol ink painting which is why I haven't done any in a while but what I will do is put on some of my birds. Yep sometimes I do cheat and I add my birds afterwards because my window is now currently open but it's it's autumn they're not around as much, they're, they're always there in summer. But for some reason, um, even though I've got lots of flowers and lots of trees in my garden, they kind of disappear in autumn, it's quite sad and I miss my birds. So I'm gonna add them on in the background and I'm going to leave you with the visuals and it's important for you to um, just maybe rewind the video once or twice. Um, and so you can try and understand the technique and the, Wrist action is really important. You'll see me often just sort of circulate it round and round. And what the what you're trying to do is avoid the alcohol ink from spreading out too far. You want to kind of keep it contained in a circular motion. And that's why I use these circular wrist motions. Honestly, I hope I'm explaining it right to you. As I said, I'll, I encourage you to watch the visuals. It's quite a long video. I have purposely not edited this at all you will see no cuts this will be as is mistakes and all and I will come back when 
I um, make that mistake because I do do one mistake. It's not a mistake. It's more like a, a part of the design that I didn't like and then I decided to uh, wipe off. So the minute I get to that part, I'll be back and I will explain to you what I've done to solve the problem.
And here is the bit that I told you I made a mistake in. I was just trying to clean the sides down and uh, my little red bottle splashed all over and left me with lots of dots. Now I personally don't like dots in my artwork, I just hate it. Um, I don't like that look. I actually didn't realise for quite a while that it was there, I was too busy cleaning the edges. And you don't need to clean the edges, but I just wanted it to stay as white as possible. But then afterwards I changed my mind and I kind of let the alcohol ink drip down the sides. So as I'm cleaning my table there, I'm like, oh no. And that's when I noticed it. So I'm trying to dab it off with some of the alcohol that's on that kitchen paper, but it didn't work. So this was the part that I just thought, okay, let's go for it. Let's just add lots onto that bit and let's rework that area completely. And once again, I'm adding isopropyl alcohol pure and I'm mixing a drop or two, mostly two drops, into each of those cups of the alcohol, the pure alcohol. Just swirl them around and then I'm just going to go for it. So we'll see how this goes. And so sometimes, as Bob Ross would say, it's not an accident, it's a happy accident. Because I ended up liking this effect much better than it was before. Although I probably would have kept it as it was before. But as I said, a happy accident. All is well that ends well. And I, am, I decided that I would stop here. I remember thinking, right, that's enough. Don't go overboard. You will see that I'm leaving an area um, now it's on the right there, it's of, of empty space and that's because um, I didn't actually say this but this is for my friend Tracy, she is a reflexologist, an amazing reflexologist and she also sells sort of some very lovely uh, tropical face creams and uh, face treatments and she wanted one of these Lazy Susans for one of the Christmas fairs coming up that we usually do together and she wanted one of these Lazy Susans in the theme of the product, which is a tropical theme, to display all of the products on. So this is for her. And most importantly, what I'm doing here is giving it a good coat of spray varnish. This is really important before you add resin on the top. So let this dry completely overnight. It's got to be dry before you add resin. So now to explain how I filled in the white areas, I have simply printed on some water decal paper. Using my inkjet printer, I've then done one coat of an acrylic varnish to seal it in. And I'm simply going to slide some of these tropical leaves around the area and form an, a nice pattern. And then we can get on to the top coating.
So just to quickly explain what I'm doing here, I've just got this silicone mold with some water, it's just plain water, and I am soaking the decal paper in it, and one by one I am going to slide them off and onto the Lazy Susan board. That's simply what I'm doing. Of course, this part's optional. You don't need to do this as this video was mostly about the alcohol ink, but I just wanted to show you this process. So I'm going to be trying out this one-to-one -one ratio epoxy resin by Istoyo. Um, it also comes with this handy resin mixer, which I thought would maybe overmix the resin and leave too many bubbles, but it really doesn't. And it's really practical for when you've got large amounts of resin. So it's as simple as mixing equal parts of A and B. And I actually mixed up way too much, so I ended up pouring half of it out into another jug, which I then used after I'd finished doing this to create some leftover resin projects, which I always, I always seem to have. So my other tip that I can give you if you're doing this for a client, this was a friend, but nonetheless, I did send her a photo of it before adding the resin top coat. Just wanted to check with her that this is what she had in mind. And if there was any changes to be done, it could still be done um, before the top coat. So with these mixes, you actually don't need to whisk for the entire three minutes you can get away with about a minute and a half two minutes and it will be fully mixed and um, in case you're wondering you can just kind of pull it out and just leave this head down onto a piece of parchment paper to to kind of drip overnight and then you can peel it back the next morning okay most importantly make sure your table is level this is super important when you're doing top coats. Now I generally don't like doing top coats. I find that it's really hard to keep any dust out. Sometimes you get divots in it. Sometimes a fly will go inside and unfortunately can't get that out. But I find that the best way of doing this is to add enough of resin into it so that there is enough tension, resin tension. I call it resin tension because sometimes what will happen is it will flow all down the sides and then you're left with patches that um, haven't got enough resin on the top of it. So I'm just having a bit of fun swirling it around. It's not necessary, it's only because it's a Lazy Susan and I can. And I do like these serrated edged spatulas. It gives an even coat, it kind of pushes it along and leaves an even surface all the way around. And then once this is done, um, if you've got any windows open, I suggest you close them. That's a good tip I can give you because then you won't get as many dust particles flying in. But I can tell you that resin is, unless you're really lucky, you will always get one or two little bits of dust on the surface and it's a handmade object and it doesn't really matter. I've sold many like that and no one's ever complained about the old dust bit that I have had absolutely no power over. It's floated on, even though I've come back an hour later to check on it and scanned it furiously all the way around. Nonetheless, the next day I get there, it's cured and overnight something has floated into it. So what I try and encourage when I, especially when I run workshops, is it's about the fun of it it's about the enjoyment of it and resin is a very it's a very unpredictable material so don't feel disheartened don't go pouring loads and loads of layers on it and wasting resin just to get the perfect finish you really never will i mean it's rare that you will But initially, I do like to use a heat gun. I prefer a heat gun to a torch lighter because you just get more heat. And what I'm just going to do is get rid of surface bubbles. But I, I did wait, you didn't see this here, I did wait about 10 minutes 
just to let the natural bubbles rise from the bottom up to the top, which is what happens with resin. And then leave it overnight. Don't touch it. Don't come. Don't fiddle. And the next morning, here it is. So I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you did. Thumbs up, please. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer them. I've tried to explain the process of alcohol ink as much as I can. As I said in the beginning of the video, I haven't done many lately because I found it's actually easier to teach in person. But I do still enjoy showing them to you. So that's what I've done today. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.